What's going on, everyone? Happy Thursday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had taken a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update for Thursday, August 15th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. We're going to be talking about several of them today, not just COVID. We'll be talking about MPOX, whooping cough is an issue. So you want to stay tuned because you need to be informed with what's going on with all these different viruses. Our main focus on this channel always and probably will be for the foreseeable future, COVID. Why? The COVID pandemic still with us. We're in a massive summer wave right now in the United States. It sounds like I'm repeating the same thing day after day, but really COVID is continuing day after day, but we do find out new information each and every day, and you need to be informed on that. The levels, they're constantly changing. In this case, they're going up in most places right now, which is not good, which increases the chance that you could be infected, or unfortunately, maybe you already have been infected in this wave. I've received several comments about that. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it with anyone you know. Hit that notification bell. You'll know when the video comes out. And of course, leave your comments down below. Alrighty, quick note before we get to today's news, which there's a lot of things to get through today. We are testing a different clip-on microphone today to try and eliminate the headset uh, routine, which we've been using. We've been using that same headset since on or about the start of the channel. So let me know down below. Do you like this better? Or do you think we should go back to the old way? Give me your opinion down below. And there's a reason why we're testing that clip on. I'll have that announcement down the line. That's right. Little uh, spoiler alert. There is something that's going to be changing down the line. But right now, everything's staying the same. All right. Starting off with MPOX today. Who confirms first case of MPOX outside of Africa as outbreak spreads? And yes, remember yesterday, the World Health Organization declared it a public health emergency of international concern. Well, it has now spread to another country, and that country is Sweden, where someone has tested positive for this new, deadlier strain of MPOX. I know, that is not a good thing. All right, today we take a look at this. Probably should have gotten to this a couple days ago, and that is something that Gregory Travis posts on X almost each and every week. COVID versus influenza, weekly update. July 2024, there were... 91 influenza deaths. People can still die in July of influenza. However, COVID deaths in July of 2024, 2,315 deaths. That's 25 times more. Influenza deaths, 7,539 influenza deaths. COVID deaths, four times higher at 28,655. July wastewater, four. Influenza, low. COVID, very high. What's my point? COVID is causing far more deaths and far more infections right now than flu. And that will probably remain the case even as we head into the fall and into the winter where we will see COVID being pretty much what rules the roost. All right, taking a look now at what is going on with pertussis. Whooping cough. Yes, it is rising once again in Alaska. I don't believe this is the first time we talked about Alaska, but back in July, they reported 131 new cases. Through the end of July, um, they had 131 pertussis cases had been reported in Alaska this year is what I'm trying to say. That compares to 26 cases reported last year and only two cases in 2022 and just one case in 2021. Yeah, that's rapidly getting worse. It does not stop there. Connecticut reports whooping cough cases spike in Connecticut. Health officials urge families to get vaccinated. So, yes, Connecticut Department of Health commissioner said there are 111 confirmed cases of pertussis, more commonly known as whooping cough. It's a significant increase from last year when there was a total of just 11 cases. So they have 100 more cases this year in Connecticut. Wow. And the year's not even over. We're still just in the middle of August. All right. Here's a new study that's out. 
In COVID-19 patients, neurological symptoms last up to three years. Effects include brain fog, fatigue, and depression. Of course, this will make it into today's list of stories used in the pandemic update, and you'll be able to read this whole thing for yourself there rather than me sitting here reading it to you on video. But overall, it's just confirming what we have known. And it does say that more than 60% of people who contracted COVID-19 have some form of neurological symptoms, and that can impact the quality of life. Uh, brain fog happens, all kinds of different things. It goes on to show you COVID is a serious disease. All right, refreshing the UK, and we do have this week's UK update. And the update from the United Kingdom is as follows. Weekly cases, they're down 742. That's down by 216. Weekly deaths, 193. That's actually up by 19. That's up by 10.9%. And I should say weekly cases are down by 22.5%. More good news, sandwiched in between that little bit of bad news from deaths, is healthcare. The number of patients admitted has dropped to 2,695. That's down by 455, or 14.4%. And the positivity rate up to August 3rd was 13.2%. All right, taking a look at today's pollen levels. Not too great. It says 28% of the country is in medium status, but take a look here. We see red in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, even down in Kentucky, Illinois, uh, even over in Missouri, we see uh, issues at this time. It's funny, though, when you take a look at Illinois, you do see that the southern portion of the state is red. The northern portion of the state is green. Red means that pollen levels are high or very high. And then you see in the plains, there's some red as well. Moving on now, taking a look at air quality levels. It's a mixed bag across the country. There are a lot of places that are not doing great. It's hazy here in Philadelphia today. And well, as you can see here, air quality does represent that. It's the wildfire smoke that continues to cause problems. And some of this has filtered its way down I-95 as far south as Georgia. And there's even some air quality issues for some reason along the Gulf Coast today. Then you get to the Pacific Northwest. You can see Northern California, Oregon, really having problems. Uh, portions of Western Canada, look at this, Alberta, really bad in Alberta, Canada. If you're in that area, you want to be masking if you go outside because that is not safe to inhale those bad air qualities. Moving on to heat-related illnesses, yes, there's still a problem. It's the middle of August. It's to be expected at this time of year, and there'll probably be a few places where this increases. You'll have the combination of bad air quality and heat, which could relate to some heat-related illness calls. Taking a look at this, here's my other X account. I hope to do some tweeting there today. It's Climate Data Report, where I talk about climate and weather. I mainly share stories. Sometimes I show things from the computer weather models as well. Philadelphia on Wednesday had 812 EMS incidents reported. Let's do a live look in at just outside of Philadelphia in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Respiratory emergency is showing up not one, not two, but three different times, 15 total EMS incidents right now. And we do see some calls in Chester County right now, uh, several injured person calls, and not one, not two, but three heart problem calls. We also do see sick person showing up as well. Pennsylvania did do a wastewater update today. And when we take a look at that, we do note here, Delaware County, Pennsylvania, in Southeast Pennsylvania, is noting that there is an increase. Chester County, once again, another increase. York County, Pennsylvania, increase. And then we come up here to Westmoreland and Armstrong County. That is showing an increase. And up in McKean County, near Bradford, Pennsylvania, that's showing an increase. And everywhere else is either stable or decreasing. There's just one place that's decreasing, and that's up near Lansdale, Montgomery County. So good to see that it's not rising a whole lot, and we don't see any of these red large increases, just the orange increases in some places. The one place I'm going to be watching, because the students are coming back soon, is Center County, Pennsylvania. Usually that does tend to see some sort of an illness increase when the students come back. I've been tracking that area for a long time. Taking a look at what's going on in Maryland today. Forgive me, I do need to refresh this. I hope this is up. Uh, it's up to speed. We do see a lot of yellow alert hospitals, which means... The emergency departments are busy at this time, and 
can't handle any more people. Let's take a look at Walgreens for this week. Walgreens, the national positivity trend is 38.3%. The prior week was 40.4%. Difference of down 2.2%. Testing continued to go higher, and it's good to see testing going up. But when you're seeing testing going up at this point in the ball game, it indicates that, yes, there are uh, quite a few people testing positive at this point in time. Taking a look at Canada for today, the viral activity level of COVID-19 is moderate. Flu A is low, flu B is low, and RSV is low at this time. All right, all of the CDC data is supposed to update tomorrow. We'll be taking a look at that tomorrow. I want to revisit a few wastewater sites we've been monitoring lately. Stanford, Connecticut, first off, on wastewater scan. It's continuing to come in high for COVID. You can see it is still rising. Also, let's take a look at Newark, New Jersey again. Why do we keep revisiting this site? Because they've had a reversal. It's a wastewater site with 1.5 million population. And you can see here multiple updates. Now, one, two, three, four, five, five or six updates now have gone up where I believe it's five. So yeah, this is not good to see. New York City is just nearby. I'm gonna show you New York in just a little bit where cases, they are dropping pretty quickly. That has quickly slowed off now. Uh, let's do one more wastewater site in New Jersey. Let's go down to Oakhurst once again. We can see here wonky movement upward. And to be fair, we're gonna go out to the west for just a moment. And don't get me wrong, we do have quite a few more states we will be taking a look at today. Let's go out to Kansas. I want to know what's going on in Kansas. How about we go to Kansas City? Let's see what's going on there. It is rising ever so slightly at this time. And we will do yet another wastewater site. This time, we will go down to California. Let's check in with San Francisco. And we'll do the Western site because that's the one that was still rising. And well, on this update, it is dropping. How about we come over to the Eastern site? And you know what? I just remembered. We need to be checking for MPOX in these uh, wastewater sites. We can see here, yeah, San Francisco at this time is showing signs of dropping, but oh, look at this. Very recent too, MPOX. And then there was some other detections as well. So MPOX is being detected right now in San Francisco. Pay attention if you live there. All right, before we move on to New Jersey, let's get to today's notes because there's quite a few of them. Our user that provides us with uh, Cases from various different states has come through once again. Thank you very much for doing that. So here are the Thursday, August 15th pandemic update notes. First off, a couple notes that are from yesterday, actually. Florida daily update from Wednesday, 2,442 new cases. And wow, 35 new deaths in their daily update. So they've added another 35 deaths. That's uh, totally unacceptable but remember it's, it's a backlog they were not reporting much of anything for a while new jersey's wednesday update was 692 new cases and nine new deaths in their daily update with nine new deaths pushing them over 37,000 total deaths and new jersey hospitalizations i added this in as well today do not appear to be right i'll show you that in just a moment virginia added another 1,555 new cases to their COVID open data reportal just from today. So he's saying that's from yesterday. Arizona added 3,416 new cases and 23 new deaths, including one from May and seven from June. Colorado, 2,625 new cases and 11 CDC reported deaths. Hawaii added 573 new cases and 22 new deaths. Most of those deaths are from June and July, oftentimes when we were in a wave. We do see a lot of lagged reports of deaths that do randomly appear. Actually, they can appear at any time of the year. So from time to time, this does happen in pretty much any state. It could be something that pops up. Indiana, 3,551 new cases, including over 900 from last week. Wow. And eight new deaths. New Mexico added 1,026 new cases, seven CDC reported deaths. Nevada, 1,127 new cases and eight new deaths. Tennessee added 5,247 new cases and five new deaths. Washington, another 3,282 new cases and 25 new deaths. 
And before we move on, I do want to remind you, this is the day and age where PCR testing is not always free. Not everyone bothers to get tested. So these are pretty significant numbers, especially considering that it is the summertime. Alrighty, moving on now to New Jersey. See here, I told you, it's not correct. 320 hospitalizations? That can't be correct. They were close to, I think it was 570 yesterday or something like that, 570, and it says 70 out of 70 hospitals reporting. So suddenly hundreds of hospitalizations just ended and disappeared. Let's see what it says as for discharges. Yeah, well, if that was the case, there would be a lot more than 56 discharges, or it says deaths included. That would mean uh, if the deaths are not included, that's ooh, a lot of deaths. So something's clearly wrong here. We've seen this happen before. They had it fixed for a little while, and now we're back to where 70 out of 70 probably does not mean 70 out of 70 hospitals. All right, New York State. This is uh, interesting, but we showed you the wastewater earlier. You should have anticipated this to happen if you were following Newark and Connecticut wastewater values surrounding New York City. The cases, yes, they're still dropping, 2,386. But if you look at the chart here, follow the line, the trend it's not dropping as fast. Last week on this day, I believe this was last week on this day, the report was 2,480 with New York City included. Today, that's 2,386. That is nowhere near as big of a drop. That's a very small drop. We'll have to see what happens. Could they reverse and start going up soon? It could happen next week. Either way, if they do or if they slow down, I think once we get about a week past Labor Day, they'll continue down further. This is just going to be temper rarely at this point. Taking a look at New York State statewide hospitalizations for today, we do note, and I do need to refresh this. That's what we note. Let's see if this is correct. Oh, okay. It does look like there was a small increase for hospitalizations today. 1,257 people in the hospital, 126 people in the ICU. This is the first time I'm looking at New York State hospitalizations for today. And let's see some of the other places, because earlier it was, I kept refreshing, it wasn't updated. And I guess the last time I did it, it did update. Okay. Taking a look here at Western New York, 56 people in the hospital, four in the ICU. That is up slightly. And New York City, that is one place we definitely want to look at. Still dropping at this time. Not dropping fast, but it is still dropping. We hope to start seeing that drop more. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Taking a look at what's going on here in, where is this? Long Island. Long Island actually reports a little bit of an increase today. 232 people hospitalized. 27 people in the ICU. Let's check on the capital region. Isn't that where we've been seeing big increases? Yeah, we did. And today it dropped a little bit. 76 people in hospital, 14 in the ICU. Colorado, not good. Slight increase in hospitalizations this week. 139, that's up by 5. The positivity rate is 27.8. That is up by 4.6%. That's a really high positivity rate for a COVID dashboard, a state COVID dashboard. That's something you would expect from Walgreens, but here we are, emergency department visits diagnosed with COVID. That's 1.9% of them. Cases reported this week, 2,618. That's up by 128. Taking a look at emergency department visits, we can see 2% of them, this is in Washington now, Taking a look at emergency department visits in the state of Washington, 2% of them are for COVID. That is actually, believe it or not, somehow down by 8%. And we do note here, COVID hospital admissions are down by 4%. 20 people are in the ICU for COVID. That's up by 2. Influenza, 0. That's actually down by 1. Finally today, Ohio. And unfortunately, Ohio's cases have gone higher. There's an O in Ohio, and that is the higher cases. And you can see here, 7,000 347 new cases have been reported in Ohio. Hospitalizations continue to rise. Of course, it's refreshing on me. You get the idea. Ohio is reporting higher cases this week. Here we go. 238 hospitalizations versus 290. Yeah, that's an increase. ICU admissions are higher. It's 11 versus 7. Deaths are higher. And actually, those um, deaths, that's 7. That's actually the three-week reported average and the three week average of cases is or of deaths is 16 and the total number of deaths reported in the last week is 20 so that is higher and you can see the previous report was at 11 so ohio the numbers continue to go higher i hope within the next week or two 
I can report Ohio has peaked and is dropping because this is crazy how long Ohio has been going up. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update. We will have another update again tomorrow. If you like this update, give it a thumbs up. Also, let me know down below, what do you think of this new microphone that we're using here? I have probably still going to be some kinks to work out, but I'm using a new clip-on microphone. I'll tell you why real quickly, because I do have a trip that is, well, quote, potentially planned in about a week and a half going to visit some relatives up north. The pandemic update will continue during that for most of the period. We may miss one or two days, but for the most part, it will continue. And of course, if COVID levels in the great state of Maine do not come down even further or wastewater is looking really bad, well, I may not take that trip, so we'll have to see what happens. Fingers crossed. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Again, comments down below about this new microphone. I hope it's better. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. And, of course, I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Thursday. Thanks for watching.